Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here. Uh, thank you for joining us for uh, another Beer Money Sunday. Okay, I've actually got my coffee today because i uh, got to work for the rest of the day, but uh, wherever you're at in the nation there, saddle up with your, uh, with your favorite adult beverage or otherwise, and uh, let's get started here. Again, thank you for joining me. Uh, love doing these kind of informal Sunday talks. Uh, get the chance to take off the bow tie and uh, just kind of relax. Talk to you about uh, investing and uh, and the stock market and and kind of you know how to make your money work for you. So so that's always fun. Let me know if you're uh, coming through uh, coming through all right. If you can hear me, see a lot of uh, a lot of great members of the Bowtie Nation already there in the chat talking back and forth. Uh, see Sven from Germany. Uh, a couple others from uh, you know New York uh, there on the in Seattle. Thanks for being here. Uh, love uh, love doing these every Sunday. So uh, yeah, like I said, a lot of a uh, lot of work working around the clock lately because I've got some great videos coming for you. I'm uh, gonna start doing a challenge series this week. Gonna do every Wednesday. Gonna do uh, really kind of an ultimate guide to stock picking and and the stock market. So be watching for that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe and and click that bell button so you uh, so you get notified when those come out because that's gonna be a great series. Got four four videos over four weeks about uh, really how to start investing, how to watch the markets, and and how to pick some of those stocks. So watch for that. Um, the next Monday I've got an inflation video coming out. It's hugely important right now. Uh, seeing just all these indicators for inflation coming up and about to get our uh, monthly CPI, the Consumer Price Index uh, inflation number coming out, not next week, but the next. And I think it's going to be a surprise one. I think it's going to be a big one. It's going to let get a lot of people talking uh, about inflation. And you're going to want to be in these inflation protected uh, ty types of investments that we'll talk about. So be watching for that. Uh, I'll be putting that together for you this week and probably putting it out next Monday on the uh, you know on the 12th or, or something. Uh, what we're talking about today, though, is just as important because if you've been following the market, if you've been following you know the, the earnings releases, uh, earnings, stock market or corporate earnings uh, for companies in the S&P 500, that broad index, are up 46% over the same quarter last year, right? Uh, which is just unheard of. It's amazing, amazing growth. Uh, and 86% of companies are beating expectations. They're beating those consensus estimates for those earnings, uh, which is the highest in uh, probably more than a decade. Uh, but the problem is with this is stocks really aren't booming in response. You know, you would expect uh, companies reporting 50 and 60% and sales growth and, and uh, you know, earnings growth, they would just, the stocks would take off. And in fact, uh, some stocks are actually falling. We've seen big moves in a lot of the stocks that have reported over the last couple of weeks, you know, on each on each side. Um, there, we've seen some really big stock drops like with Pinterest, like with Microsoft, even Tesla fell on its earnings, uh, while other stocks like uh, Facebook and uh, Google have, have jumped maybe four or five, six percent. Um, so I want to talk about, you know, why stocks fall even when the earnings reports are so good, what to watch for right now, and some of the market trends that we're seeing develop um, you know, in the in the stock market. Uh, before we get started, though, you know, I want to want to send a personal uh, personal invite to everyone out there. Sign up for the daily bow tie. It's our free market newsletter. It goes out every night before the stock market opens the next day. Uh, really shares with you all the trends, the stock market news that I'm following, and uh, really how you should be positioning uh, in in stocks. It's completely free. Just something I like to do for everyone out there in the community. So. Uh, so look for that link. I've got the link there pinned in the chat, or I'll put it in the uh, you know in the description and in the comments below as well. Check that out. Uh, it's, like I said, it's completely free. Just something I like to do for everyone here in the uh, here in the nation. Uh, but let's get to it because uh, you know again, historics earnings are historic, uh, historically high. And I want to actually I want to look at um, a, a research that I use, and all you all you out there in the Bowtie Nation, you know. You're gonna you're gonna recognize this because uh, I I've highlight it quite a bit, but it's Fact Set Earnings Insight. Okay, so you go to Google, type in Fact Set Earnings Insight, uh, and this is always gonna be usually about the top uh, the top uh, the top search there. It's gonna be a PDF document, and what this is is just a a biweekly or sometimes weekly during earnings uh, Fact Set Earnings or Fact Set Research. They, uh, they update their survey of, of earnings reports and uh, earnings estimates, right? And it's just a great resource to be able to follow uh, earnings. 
so so far we've got a, about a quarter of the uh, you know as of April 23rd. So this one's this one's lagging a, a couple of weeks. They'll probably update this uh, pretty soon and, and put out uh, put out a new one because I know about 50% of companies in the S&P 500, those large American-based uh, large cap companies, have reported so far. Uh, but just just uh, uh, as far as this date, 25% of the companies in the S&P 500 have, have reported results with 84% of them um, reporting a positive surprise, right? Beating those expectations of, uh, of what they, you know, of what the market was, was expecting. And uh, it's actually closer to about 86% now as of Friday. Uh, and if that's, uh, you know, if that's the final percentage, then it would be the highest percentage of S&P 500 companies beating expectations since 2008. Right. Uh, so more than a decade. Uh, earnings growth is here. It says 33.8 percent. Uh, it's actually, again, as of this Friday. So uh, they're about a week lagging here. But as of this Friday, it's closer to about 46 percent, 44 percent. And here again, if, if that's the actual growth rate for the quarter and that's this quarter, first quarter versus first quarter of 2020, if that's the uh, the the uh, ending growth rate, it'd be the highest year over year since 2010. So again, a decade high for uh, for earnings for for S and P 500 companies. And we can talk about you know why that is, what's spurring those, how far it could go. You know, I think we're still going to see a record high earnings growth in the second quarter as well as the third. And sure, you can uh, you can disclaim this and say, well, yeah, but it's against earnings that were absolutely horrible last year, uh, earnings that fell off a cliff last year, right, during the pandemic. But, you know, even taking into account, these are still some amazing earnings growth and really get us to beyond where we were uh, were before the pandemic. So uh, so we're on track to uh, for 2021 to be earnings of even higher than uh, than where we started uh, before the pandemic. And uh, that's, you know, got some real implications for stocks. Okay, in fact, uh, we can actually look and see where we can scroll down here. And again, this is a fax that just surveys, you know, all the analysts, uh, you know, working on Wall Street uh, about their earnings estimates for different companies, for all the companies in the S&P 500. They track all the actual earnings being reported uh, and then they kind of compare those and see where things go. So actually, this chart shows the, uh, the EPS, the earnings per share estimates for the S&P 500, so for the market. Uh, and of course, you can see here, uh, 2020, you know, last year was did fall quite a bit, uh, fell from $163 per share for all the companies in the S&P 500, fell from $163 a share to 140 last year. So there was that big drop off. But right now, we are expecting a hundred uh, bounce to $180 per share. Um, you know, here this year in 2021. And as we've seen, you know, these companies are beating these expectations, beating these estimates by wide margins. So I, I bet we actually see some, something closer to maybe $190 per share uh, on the S&P 500 as far as earnings. And, um, and just give you an idea of kind of what kind of growth that would be. You know, so, so if we hit, even if we hit the expectations, which is $180 a share for growth uh, for earnings in the S&P 500, even if we just hit that, uh, that would still be growth of more than 10% over 2019. Okay, that's not over, not counting, you know, last year's uh, anomaly year with the, uh, with the pandemic, but that's just over kind of that normal growth, right? 100 or 10%, then they're expecting $204 a share in next year, right? So here we're getting to, uh, to quite a bit, multiples quite a bit over what we had in uh, 2019. You know, even if they just uh, just meet expectations for next year's earnings, this is companies in the S&P 500, even if they just meet earnings expectations, which of course they always beat, uh, we would sit, be sitting at 25% higher than 2019. Okay, so you got to look at this and say, okay, you know, I mean, if, if companies' earnings, which, you know, if nation, remember, earnings are always that long-term valuation of the stock market, okay? Uh, you know, over the short term, over a month, a quarter, even a year, you get, it's really about investor sentiment. You know, how much are investors willing to pay for stocks in the market? How, uh, how, how enthusiastic are they, right? Uh, and that's gonna drive those PE ratios, that's price to earnings ratios, and, and can drive stocks higher even if earnings aren't growing very much. But longer term, uh, and especially for you long-term investors out there, you got to look at these earnings and say, hey, you know, if uh, if earnings are, are expected to be 25% or more, probably end up being about 30% uh, 
uh, higher than 2019 next year in 2022, then uh, you know obviously that's going to justify a much higher, uh, much higher stock market. Right, so I know a lot of people have been looking at the stocks, stock market, and saying, I mean, look at this, look at the rally they've had over the last year. It can't go up forever. We're in a bubble, all that kind of stuff. But you know, if you look at uh, longer-term earnings growth and the longer-term earnings expectations, that's some real support for uh, for stocks. So, so just don't get too bearish on um, you know how high stocks are right now because. Uh, if they've, you know, they've they've gone up, uh, earnings have gone up so fast and so far, then that does lend support to stocks, and uh, and we could talk about, you know, why that uh, why that is as well. So, so uh, earnings so far have been great. Uh, expectations for the rest of the year are, are very good, um, but why are stocks flat, you know, or down? Um, yes, sure. April was actually April closed out with about a four percent. Uh, return on the S&P 500. So the S&P 500, that broad index gained 4% in April, which was actually the best month since November. Uh, but you saw a huge disparity between stocks, right? Uh, for, for the most part, and especially over the last two weeks, you know, a lot of that, a lot of that return was front loaded into the first, the first and second week of April, as we started getting ready in anticipation for these earnings. But over the last two weeks, as these earnings have come out, then a lot of stocks haven't done well. You know, Tesla was down four and a half percent on earnings, earnings that grew three hundred and four percent over the year. Right, sales for Tesla sales were up seventy four percent over last year. You know, so how can a stock that that reports uh, earnings that tripled over the last year how can it be down four and a half percent? Right. And you know we'll talk about some of these other stocks that also fell uh, because Tesla was a little bit of a uh, you know a little bit of an aberration, right? Uh, Tesla had some special circumstances there that caused the stock to go down. Uh, they made a gain of 101 million dollars by selling some of their Bitcoin uh, and 500 million dollars selling their regulatory credits, right? So you know with something we talked about in the uh, the Bowtie Daily newsletter uh, last week was that. Uh, all these other car companies, these legacy car companies, uh, you know, Volvo, Ford, GM, right? They have to meet uh, environmental regulation, right? They have to meet emission standards set by the government. And to do that, they uh, since they're still mainly carbon or uh, combustion engines, they still burn gasoline in their car, most of their cars, right? Then they have to buy credits, right? They have to buy these emissions credits to lower their, you know, lower their their overall emissions uh, for the company. And you know, since Tesla only makes those electric vehicles, they're just flooded with these credits. They earn those credits because their emissions are, are so low across the fleet, the fleet of cars that they sell. So basically, Tesla can sell these credits, these excess credits that it has that it doesn't need, to these other car companies. And uh, you know, that's been a big part of the earnings over over the last years, actually. But uh, especially in this last quarter, they made five hundred million dollars just selling those regulatory credits. So the problem with Tesla this week was, you know, investors are worried. Investors are wondering, okay, what in these earnings that were so good, that were really good, really, uh, you know, what is something that they can keep growing, keep raising, and stuff that you know is kind of one-time effects, and it's really these one-time effects that boosted their earnings, uh, but kind of worried investors a little bit, right? Obviously, they're not going to make a hundred one million dollar gain every quarter on Bitcoin, so that's something you kind of gotta. You got to remove from those earnings to see what their true earnings were. Uh, these five hundred million dollars in regulatory credits that they sold, also something that, while it will have obviously a lo longer lifespan, they'll be selling re regulatory credits to to Ford and GM for you know quarters and even years now. Um, but it's something that over time, as Ford, as GM, as Volvo, Volkswagen get their own EV fleets selling and they lower their own emissions uh, across across all their cars, they're not going to need to buy as many regulatory credits from Tesla anymore, okay? So so obviously uh, investors are a little worried that, okay, you know what, of the $600 million they booked in, uh, in profits on Bitcoin and regulatory credits, but then they actually lost money on their, uh, you know, on the main business uh, of selling selling electric vehicles, right? That was actually kind of a loss making uh, business this quarter. So, you know, investors were, were a little bit spooked about that, but Tesla ended up uh, clawing it all back. Uh, it was something like a four and a half percent or four percent gain on Friday. So, you know, investors were worried, but obviously not too worried about that. Uh, Microsoft, though, Microsoft fell even on a 44% income growth, okay? They, uh, Microsoft, 
Microsoft booked 44% net income growth, profit growth over the last year on, on real, real strength in its cloud business, which was up 50%. Uh, I had some one-off tax benefits and currency boosted the, the bottom line, but, uh, but just some amazing growth. And it was down to Netflix, dropped 7.6% on a slowdown in its subscriber growth. Uh, and this is something that we're seeing with a lot of those social media stocks, right? Pinterest, uh, Twitter, and Netflix all fell uh, pretty harshly uh, because you know they're seeing that uh, people are getting out uh, out of their houses and away from their phones a little bit more now and aren't you know aren't signing up for those subscriptions or aren't playing on social media quite as much as they were um, although Facebook did really well because you know it's kind of more ad driven it's got more of those uh, those ads and uh, you know those those uh, marketing marketing ads really boost uh, jumped last quarter uh, you know so so you saw that in Facebook and in Google the both of those stocks were, were up quite a bit so the the real uh, the real conundrum here the real uh, you know the real puzzle for uh, for for investors is you know these these stocks every company is really delivering amazing earnings results and uh, and we're expecting you know with all the money pumped into the system with all the money pumped into the economy we're expecting these these earnings to continue into the second quarter and third quarter and stuff like that so uh, so why aren't the stocks booming okay. You know, and, and what you got to understand with uh, with earnings, a, a lot of times is that uh, it's not so much the earnings they 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 report because you know analysts already have their their estimates for earnings. Sure, companies might beat it. Uh, it's kind of a game that that companies play to try to beat earnings estimates. But uh, but for the most part, we already know what earnings are going to be uh, about for a company. And uh, so it's much more about the outlook that the company gives, right? The outlook that that companies are giving, uh, you know, as far as the next quarter and the next year, right? So, so it's much more, you know, trying to predict what that next shoe to drop, what that next headline is going to be for each company and for the market as a whole. And what we're seeing in some of those market trends is that a lot of companies are talking about, uh, you know, talking about consumer inflation or passing on those those producer inflation prices that are that are increasing. Uh, we just got the, uh, the the producer price index last week. It showed, um, I want to say it showed 1.9% uh, gain year over year in producer price inflation. And I think that's actually really low. Okay, uh, what we're seeing in a lot of other stuff, especially commodities, which are the, um, you know, so, so those are going to be the raw materials that go into everything else, right? You're talking copper, you're talking all the food, the food stuff, all the grains. Uh, those are all um, pretty much double or triple over the last year, right? Corn, wheat, soybeans, uh, copper, all of those are, are you know prices of multi multi year multi decade highs and, and have pretty much tripled over the last year. So if you see a lot of these earnings reports, you read a lot of the earnings reports or watch the uh, watch the the webinars, then everybody is talking about this inflation and how they're having to pr pass it on to uh, to consumers. So. You know, that's a big fear in the market right now because obviously, uh, you know, if prices go up, then consumers are, are going to be able to buy less. Uh, we are seeing a lot of a lot of people talk about these, uh, how how much they're they're going to uh, they're going to raise prices. Uh, Whirlpool actually said that, uh, you know, they're one of the few that actually give a percentage uh, of you know how much they're going to be raising prices, right? Uh, a lot of a lot of other companies have just said they're going to raise prices. I know Kimberly Clark has said it. Uh, Procter and Gamble, I think, has said uh, said they're going to raise prices starting summer and into September. But Whirlpool has actually given us an estimate, a percentage range for how much they're going to uh, they're going to raise prices, and it's going to be between five to twelve percent. Okay, so this is everything, all those those big uh, these those big household equipment things like washer and dryer and and uh, appliances and things like that five to twelve percent increase on prices on those over the next uh, you know probably over the next six months okay economists say that uh, that when you see when you start seeing those uh, commodity prices increase then the consumer prices lag by about six months or, or less you know about two or three quarters really uh, so you know we've got the consumer price index for uh, for April coming up on the I believe it's the 12th um, you know, the 12th or the 17th of this month. Uh, and, and I think that's going to start showing these uh, these big increases in inflation. Uh, but just over the next few months, we're going to start seeing that. And uh, so, you know, investors are obviously worried that, okay, one, are our, our companies going to be able to pass on all this, uh, all this inflation? Okay, if they're not, 
you know, if consumers either won't, uh, you know, won't buy those more products if, if the prices go up or, you know, if management just chooses not to pass on all that inflation, obviously profits are going to come down. Profits might come down from where we actually expect them right now because, uh, you know, obviously if, uh, if the, the companies are paying more for their supplies and their raw materials, but they're not spending. Uh, passing all that money or all that cost onto the consumer through their higher prices, then then they're going to have to eat that, and that's going to be lower prof profits. Um, the other side of that is if they do pass all that cost onto consumers, then obviously you know consumers are, are going to be able to buy less than uh, than they, what they could have otherwise. You know, and it's just going to be a shock to the system uh, when consumers see that that consumer price inflation of five to twelve percent. I mean, that's double. We haven't had double-digit uh, consumer inflation since since like the '80s. Okay, so uh, so you know, if you ever if you you want something to compare it back with, look at uh, look at stagflation in the early '80s, where the economy wasn't hardly growing, but prices were up double digits. Uh, so that's tough. Um, and I think on a lot of that, also one of the other th trends that we're seeing is is the market's just looking for new leadership, right? Tech and, and growth stocks worked really well last year, boomed uh, shares of Tesla up 700%, right? Uh, but right now they're really looking a little overvalued and they've got that interest rate uh, headwind, right? Anything in tech, anything in biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, that kind of thing. Uh, a lot of these these other uh, high growth stocks are really bumping up against those, those higher interest rates. And of course, as we get higher inflation, that takes interest rates higher and, uh, and is going to weigh on those growth stocks as well. You know, energy and financials, anyone out there in the nation, you know, uh, we've done really well on energy and financials since November. We added those uh, really first into our 2021 Bowtie Nation portfolio back in October, November, and December. And, uh, and those are up, well, Diamondback Energy is up 155% over that period. Uh, Devon is up 55%. Um, we did, did uh, something like 65% on Citigroup and 50% gain on uh, Wells Fargo over that period. So energy and financials did really well, but are really slowing down now uh, over those last month. Actually, energy's underperformed the market. I think financials have, have underperformed the market a little bit over the last month. So, you know, we already had those expectations and, and investors bid those up and now they're slowing down. So the market's looking for that new leadership. I think it could be in industrials and material stocks and, uh, and even in consumer discretionary. Right, so industrials, stocks in the industrials and the materials sector, uh, those are going to be stocks, uh, you know, like GE, like, uh, like. Well, let's uh, let's do something here. Let's show you what uh, you know what those stocks in the uh, in these sectors look like. Uh, and this is something that, uh, again, you out there in the nation, you're going to recognize because I use this uh, this resource quite a bit. This is sectorspider.com. Uh, it's going to show you, and this is their sector tracker tool. It's going to show you the, uh, the 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 performance on all 11 sectors of the economy as well as stocks within those. Okay, so it's a great tool for uh, not only following these trends, these sectors that are doing well, um, you know, over the uh, over the last week, the month, the year to date, all the way up to five years, uh, but also see some names in those sectors and some ideas for for which stocks might do better. Uh, <clears throat> so here we're talking about uh, you know market leadership over the summer and over the over the next uh, six to eight months. Uh, and I really do think, you know, materials, industrials could do well. Uh, and those are, you know, it's just because uh, those those tend to do better when the economy bo boosts, right? When the economy recovers uh, and we're looking at, you know, six and a half to eight percent economic growth this year. Uh, so and they do well with inflation because they're typically the first, uh, you know, the first in line to get hit by inflation, but they can pass those on to their, uh, you know, to their customers, to those, those uh, manufacturers and, and things like that. Um, they can typically pass on more of those costs. So they typically do well during inflation. And that's really kind of the reflation trade that you hear about, right? You watch the news, the stock market news, and, and a lot of channels, you're going to hear about the reflation trade. And that's going to be, uh, you know, those sectors that do really well when, uh, you know, when inflation heats up a little bit. Right, so with those, you've got uh, you've got materials, industrials, financials, and energy are really that reflation trade. But what, like we talked about, energy and financials have already boomed, and they're slowing down a little bit. Uh, so, but uh, but over the last month, I mean, we can look at the six months here. Um, so yeah, you see uh, you see seventy two percent return in energy, fifty two percent in financials, but industrials and materials have kind of lagged that. Right, so I think that's where the the market picks up here in the. Uh, you know, in the next six months or so. So if you look at industrials, you get things like, uh, so so the, the airlines are in there, 
Um, you get things like uh, rentals, equipment rentals. United Rentals, I think, could do really well. Gen General Electric. Um, you get the, the railroads, deer. So the big equipment, think big equipment manufacturers, uh, big equipment users, things like that. Right in materials, that's going to be much uh, much closer to the uh, to the miners, the uh, the miners, the chemical makers, things like that. So you got Freeport Mac McMoran uh, copper miner. You've got Mosaic, uh, which is a uh, fertilizer, agricultural chemicals. You got uh, Alba Marley, which is um, you know lithium mining. You've got all these miners here that did, have done really well over the past six months, but I think uh, could could continue to uh, to go up uh, there. Uh, we've also got consumer discretionary, obviously, with the with the stocks, uh, with the economy reopening, people getting out of their houses. Uh, you know, I'm surprised consumer discretionary has only done 25 percent return over the past six months. Right. It's actually lagged the broader market. Uh, but this is really I think this is really where the uh, the rebound is. And, and yes, a lot of these stocks have already come up. You know, Caesars Entertainment has already up, you know, doubled in the last six months. L Brands, Carnival, all uh, all those all those companies have doubled in the last uh, in the last six months, but you know they've got they've got further to run as this reopening trade actually comes through. So you've got you know Expedia, Norwegian, Tesla is is in that uh, is in that group. You know uh, Win Re Resorts, uh, Under Armour, Gap, things like that, right? So uh, three sectors that I think could could do really well. You know, over the six, six, next six months, as the market looks for that new leadership in uh, in sectors, right? Um, we've already talked about how the, the market's worried about inflation uh, and that headwind uh, over the next few months is is going to you're going to want to position in sectors that are going to benefit from that inflation, um, and and look for that. So uh, so that's really kind of uh, kind of what we're looking at as far as you know why stocks are going down even though they're reporting these great earnings. Uh, these great earnings reports because we're looking out six months to a year ahead, right? We're looking at, you know, the next headlines that are really going to move the markets. And those are going to be things like uh, inflation. It's going to be things like the reopening, you know, which uh, which stocks and which companies benefit the most from that. Uh, it's going to be things like interest rates, which are tied very closely to that uh, to that inflation idea, you know, and, and how, infl how interest rates are going up. And that's going to hurt a lot of these... Uh, you know, a lot of these inflation or, or interest rate sensitive uh, sectors like tech, like utilities, like real estate, like consumer staples, like uh, like communication services, those high growth ones uh, as well. So now I want to I want to turn it over to uh, to question and answer, kind of talk about this and, and take your questions.